Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome out tonight to the Full Gospel Interdenominational Live Service. The Full Gospel Interdenominational Church Live Service. Amen. I see a few faces coming on here. Praise the Lord, Brother Dale. Amen. Good to see your name come up there. 21 years old now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Brother Matt and, and uh, oh my, Brother Steve Bruckner and I don't know all these different things on here go live or I know the wave is wave so uh, I'm just going to be here and greet you all and look forward to seeing my brothers and sisters come on board here. Sister Lori Chokitos, praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Stephanie and Sister Kim, Brother Rob, God bless you. Amen. I tried putting this phone up a little bit higher so it would be a little more straighter there. Amen. Sister Mancini, Sister Chrislin, praise the Lord. Brother Ed Hamlin, God bless you, my brother. Amen. Sister Mavis, let's see if I get this right. I always tease your daughters. Adu, it's not Ado, so it's Adu. Sister Adu, amen. Did I get it right? Maybe I did. <laughs> amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, happy Wednesday, y'all. All right, Brother Dale with his southern accent. Y'all come back now here. Sister Margie Gaynor. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so nice to see the church family coming on. To the Curdies. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Mary Ann. And, oh, praise God. Hi, Sister Shelley. We'll just give our church family time to get on here. I feel like I'm so far away from this phone, and I'm not. I just seen a car go down my street, so pardon me. Uh, maybe they fixed it. We have three power lines. One is down, and two trees are laying across them. So... We trust you're all safe and doing well, and your properties are well. God is faithful. Amen. Can somebody say amen that God is faithful? The heralds are watching. Sister Pat Boudreaux, hello there. Yes, Sister Joan. So nice to have Sister Mia, your granddaughter, up for a while. Sister Judy, Sister Pauline, Sister Vicki, Sister Janet Capella, Mike Fido, come on down. Amen. <clears throat> so good to see all of your names. Soon and very soon we shall be worshiping together again. I heard Pastor mention that August 16th, we will be coming together in the sanctuary one more time. That's going to be wonderful. Different, but wonderful. Amen. Sister Nell Kaplan Kies. All right. That means Dean and Nell are watching. <clears throat> Brother Anthony. Brother Mike Semino, you're killing me, man. Amen. Brother Carl. Brother Ed said, God has spared us from any power outage. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we're very fortunate. Uh, we have power. Uh, my neighbor to the left of me has power. But my two neighbors to the right of me do not have power. We are not complaining. We are grateful. Uh, they have generators. Praise the Lord, Sister Agnes, Sister Joyce. Amen. 
Yes, Brother Dale, he's faithfully he protected your house from a tree. I heard that the tree twisted and went in another direction. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. The robins are here. Hi, Sister Ronke. God bless you, my friend. Yes, the church just posted it. Join us in church on Sunday morning, August 16th. See you there. Amen to that. Sister Cassandra Mack. Hold my mule, Sister Chris. Hold my mule. <laughs> Some of you remember that old song Sister Chris sang. What a great song. Isn't it wonderful walking with the Lord? Amen. It is wonderful, you know. Praise the Lord all around for his goodness. That's right. Praise the Lord all around, all y'all, for his goodness to the children of men. Psalm 107. Well, we got about 30 plus people on board, and we're just going to take our time here and relax. And uh, God's going to help us tonight. Yes. God is faithful, Sister Janet. He certainly is. He's faithful to the faithful. He is. You're faithful to God. God will be faithful to you. That is the truth. Sister Mia Sanchez. Praise the Lord, my friend. Amen. Did you guys get any trees down in the back? Yes, sir, we have. Tomorrow morning, somewhere around 9, 10 o'clock, we'll be starting to clear them out. <clears throat> Praise God. Hello, Sister Donna. God bless you. Sister Donna's always in the Amen Corner. No matter who's preaching or teaching, she's right in there with you. Amen. Sister Janet, well, we'll give the church a little more time. I don't know how many of them don't have internet because of the storm that just went through. Uh, I hear in the New England area, there's over 3 million without power. So if you have power, praise the Lord. <clears throat> now, Sister Tammy says they don't have power there, but still watching. Trees are down everywhere here in Columbia, but you're safe. Thank God for that. Praise God. Sister Susan Kalinske, God bless you, my sister. Yes. The old songwriter says we're going to have a good, good time tonight. Ellington. Does, holy cow. All of Ellington or just a portion, Sister Chrislin? Well, we need to pray for everyone, don't we? Windsor's out. We'll have to pray that God will help give them God's speed and send us workers and give them wisdom to do what they need to do so that everybody can get up and running again. Amen. So if you're like us out here, if we lose power, we're out of everything. No running water, no bathroom to use. Uh, so... You have our prayers that God will help us through this time. Amen. Give us more time to seek his face, won't it? Have nowhere to go, nothing to do. But we can pray. We can get a hold of the heart of God and pray one for another. Amen. One neighbor of mine, I told him, you need a shower, we're here. If we have to cook a meal, we'll help them there. We are our brother's keeper. Amen. And uh, who knows, maybe you'll be able to reach and speak into the life of those around you that you haven't had the opportunity before. But now, because of this, power being out and different things, people are in need. Amen. Jackie Ludden said, we just got power back in Vernon. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Sister Marlene, God bless you. You and Brother Ken. So we'll wait a little bit longer before we get rolling here. And uh, 
give people a chance to come on board. You got 31 plus people, it says. And I don't know how many don't have internet. We didn't have it for a while. Praise the Lord, Brother Ben. God bless you. And uh, so we're grateful we have internet today. Amen, amen, amen. Greetings from the Sanchez family, from Sister Milagros Gaynor. Amen. You, you folks have power there in East Hartford. Sister Lynn says they never lost it. Praise God. What a great God we serve. I'm glad I'm saved today. He's kept me all these years. Sister Terry, God bless you. Oh, you don't have internet. We're using Meemaw's phone. Yes. I'm using my phone. I don't have internet either on my computer. Brother Minister David Owens is watching. Praise the Lord, Brother David. Yes. Well, my neighbor said he went to the gas station to get fuel for the generator, and I don't know how they would know this, but the gas station said they were told it'll be seven to ten days. I'm not believing that report. I'm praying that God is going to help us, and we are going to be having power where we need it. Amen? Faith says God can give us Godspeed, send workers, and help them get the job done in a speedy manner. Hallelujah. Brother David, he's asking me if I have any jokes. Well, since you asked, I will tell you one, and this one here, you know, there was an old, this is David Owens asked, so I have to oblige him, okay? Praise the Lord, Sister Gloria. So, <laughs> people are going, shh, Dale's saying, why do you have to ask him that? Well, you see, there was this farm, there was this man driving along a, uh, an old country road, and he came across a farmhouse. And as he's driving by slowly, he noticed what looked like a three-legged pig in the yard. So his curiosity got the best of him, and he pulled over. And so he got out of his car, and he looks, he says, my goodness, that is a three-legged pig. And yes, thank you for everybody saying yes, yes. So praise the Lord, Brother Yancey. So the farmer spotted him and came over and said, can I help you, sir? He said, well, the curiosity got the best of me. I thought I seen, he said, a three-legged pig, right? He said, well, yes, ex absolutely, that's what it was. He said, why a three-legged pig? Farmer said, he's so good, we didn't want to eat him all at once. <laughs> Come on, somebody, Brother David, you better shout right there. Ah. <laughs> uh. Brother Diane Ross, Sister Camille, oh my, now you've done it, Dale. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad to see more folks. We're up to 40 now. Well, maybe somebody didn't like the joke. We're down to 39. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Dale. I appreciate that. Sister Stephanie, God bless you. Do you have power where you are out in Ellington, Sister Stephanie? Oh, Sister Adrian must want another one. David Owens is thanking me. <laughs> well, bless the Lord, isn't it? So nice to see all you folks coming on board here. Amen. On funny, Brother Aaron, on funny. Real funny. Thank you, Sister Marianne. That actually was funny. Praise the Lord. Well, <clears throat> we'll wait about two more minutes, then we'll get rolling here. Uh, and uh, as we said before, we don't know. Uh, thank you, Sister Braswell. You enjoyed that. And Sister Terry Yarlett. 
Sister, Sister Terry always does one of these numbers with the thumb, one thumb up, one thumb down. That's a little running joke. Oh, you're showing 75. Well, praise the Lord. And Stephanie does have power in Ellington. All right. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. It's so nice to have you on tonight in our Wednesday night service. And uh, we want to take a little time tonight uh, and minister to you. But before we get there, we want to give you an opportunity here to be able to partake of giving to the Lord tonight. And how many knows that you cannot outgive the Lord? No, you cannot. So if you want to send in and the church does need your tithes and your offerings, amen, it helps keep the church going and uh, with everything that's being put in place, uh, the church needs our tithes and offerings and uh, God will bless you in your giving as unto him. And there are, uh, you can utilize the following options and the giving of your tithes and offerings, etc., you can mail your offering to P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut, 06045. Thank you, the church. Just put it up on the screen. Also, you can go to the church website, fgichurch.org, and click Donate Now. Praise the Lord, Sister Cheryl, Harold and Cheryl Ewing. And thirdly, you can use the Easy Tithe app. If you haven't already done this here, you can download the app, type the church's name or zip code to choose your church. Amen. Praise the Lord. So God bless you in your giving as unto the Lord. He will certainly bless you in doing so. <clears throat> Well, let's go to God in prayer, and then we're going to get on with the Word of God tonight. <clears throat> Pray along with me, if you will. Father, we thank you, Lord, God, that you're here in our midst where two or more are gathered together, God, in your name, coming together to worship you, to love you, to praise you. Oh, God, you're there in our midst. God, the world is changing it seems always around us but thank you Lord for you never change you are always the same you're the same yesterday today and the Bible says forever now Lord I ask for your anointing tonight I ask Lord for your direction and what I believe God and how you've spoken to my heart for your people God bless tonight your word as it goes forth, and let us run with it that we may go higher and higher in you, and we'll praise and thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. And the church said amen and amen. <clears throat> if I can read my little small handwriting here, which I will, I want to talk to you for a little while on this topic, listening for God's voice. Amen. Listening, tell your neighbor, listening for God's voice. And the Bible says in John, I want to turn here to make sure I have the exact passage. John chapter 10 and verse 27. John 10 and 27 makes this statement. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. I'll read it again. John 10 and 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Now, I don't know exactly how the delivery will come forth in this, but I'm going to speak from my heart because God has really talked to me in this simple message and if it does nothing more than to make us draw closer to God then it's hitting the nail on the head amen listening for God's voice my sheep know my voice and I know them 
and they follow me. You know, we're in a day when there's many voices gone out into our world. Jesus prophesied that there'd be many prophesying saying that Christ is here and Christ is there and many prophesying on the, on the airwaves about one belief and another belief. But we have a more sure word of prophecy in the pages of God's book called the Word of God. And God has always led his people through his word. The Spirit and the word of God always, always agree. Can you say amen? Always agrees. If somebody says God said thus and thus and you can't find it in the pages of his word, then don't believe it. Hello, somebody. The spirit and the word of God always agree. And... Uh, if someone says they're speaking prophetically, just wait and see if it comes to pass. And if it comes to pass, then you'll know that there was a prophet in your midst. So that, that's how we know whether they're speaking for God or not. But you know, it says here, if I can, uh, let's turn over to Job for a minute, because God knows how to speak to his people. Amen? Amen. God knows how to speak to his people. There's a verse here in Job in the Old Testament, Job chapter 4 and verses 15 and 16. Matter of fact, I'll go back and read a couple of verses before that. Let's go back to verses 13. Job chapter 4, starting at verse 13, it says this, In thoughts from the visions of the night... When deep sleep falleth on men, fear came upon me, and trembling, which made all my bones to shake. Then a spirit passed before my face. The hair of my flesh stood up. It stood still, but I could not discern the form thereof. An image was before mine eyes. There was silence, and I heard a voice saying, Shall mortal man be more just than God? Shall a man be more pure than his maker? And God went on talking to Job, but a voice came to Job, and Job discerned that it was the voice of God. Amen? Job heard the voice of God. He was quiet enough. God visited him in the nighttime. God doesn't always visit in the night. He'll talk to you in the daytime. He'll talk to you as you drive your car. He's talked to others as they were on their journey. He's talked to Paul by the Spirit and forbade them to go to certain areas. And then at another time, the Spirit of God beckoned them to go. Amen. So uh, the Spirit of God is still speaking in this hour to his people that will have an ear to hear how he's directing their lives. The question is, will we hear, will we listen for the voice of God in our daily lives? In the midst of everything, I sense the whole hiccup, I the Mahaya. I sense the Lord here coming across the airwaves here. Will we listen for the voice of our Heavenly Father who speaks through Christ by the Holy Ghost and tries, is willing, wants to, speak into our lives on a daily basis. In the midst of everything going on, God always had a way out for his people. But we must have an ear to hear what God is saying to us and how he may be leading us. Amen. In uh, John's gospel, let's see if I got that here. I wrote in pencil here. Acts, Acts chapter, I got to get over there. Acts chapter 10. If you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 10, let's go to another place here in the New Testament. We talked about Job. It's noted as probably the oldest book in the Bible. I don't know how they came up with that date, but that's what is said. Uh, let's just say it's been around a long, long time, and God was speaking to Job back then. Amen. So over here in Acts, 
Acts chapter 10. Are you with me? All right. Starting around verse, oh, let's see here. Let's, let's paint a picture here. Let's go back to the context in verse 9. On the morrow, as they went on their journey, they drew nigh unto the city. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. And he saw heaven opened and a certain vessel descending onto him as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And note verse 13. And there came a voice to him. Rise, Peter. Knew him by name. Rise, Peter kill and eat. But Peter being stuck, if you will, in his own mindset, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou uncommon. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Notice that God spoke to Job, and we can give many accounts. God spoke through Moses and Joshua and many of the uh, patriarchs as we know uh, as you study the word of God. I'm bringing out two simple accounts here about hearing the voice of God. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that God is the God of all flesh. Amen. God is his spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so God speaks by the Holy Ghost in this day to his people. Amen. God is trying to reach the lost in this day. I just heard an account from a woman the other day. Uh, she gave a quick account how she was driving a car. She was not saved at the time. Amen. Uh, and so uh, as it went, it was winter time and the snow was quite deep and she was driving through this area to go see a loved one who was in the hospital. Amen. And so she made a call and says, it's taken me a lot longer to get there because of the snow. Can I still get in? Matter of fact, the loved one was in a prison, if uh, uh, incarcerated. So I stand corrected there. And so she's seen a man walking kind of scraggly. And as she drove by, she said, it's so cold out, I must pick this man up. So she pulled over to him, uh, or, uh, or slowed her car down. He says, how may I help you? And she thought, how can you help me? And so he went ahead, and she said, well, I'm thinking you need a ride. It's cold out. He said, I'd love a ride. And he gets in. And so they drive a ways, and he takes his boots and shoes off. His feet are blue and going along the journey. And so he can only go, she can only go so far. And before he gets out, he says to her, the day you need me the most, I'll be there for you. And he gets out of the car, and she says, the day... I need him the most. He'll be there for me. And, and she thought about it, and she went to get out of her car, and the man was gone. She, Hakabashaya, she believed, and I do too, that God sent her an angel. She looked. There was not a footprint in the snow. There was nothing. Listen, you have your own account how God, amen, perhaps before you got saved, I believe God sent an angel to me in my Jonah days, if you will, to get my attention back in the Marine Corps, and you have your own account how God, why he wanted to save us. Amen. He brought us unto himself. And that is the heart of God. God's heart has never changed. He wants to seek and to save. He is still seeking to save that which is lost. Church, brethren, we cannot lose focus of why God saved us. And for the time, amen, that we're living in today, we must go back to the time. Can you go down memory lane to when you first got saved? What condition was your life in? How far out there were you? Can you just stop and think for a moment? Thank God somebody, be it an angel or an obedient servant of God that reached out to you in your time of calamity, in the time of crisis, 
issues in your life because after all, amen, unless we had trouble, we wouldn't need God, would we? And so somehow you and I got saved and now we've been walking the journey a while. And that brings me to this next place that God brought my attention the other night. Amen. I want to talk to you for a few minutes over here in Luke chapter 21. Amen. Going down the verses here. Let's see if I got the right passage here. Luke chapter 21. Tell your neighbor, tighten your seatbelt for a few minutes, all right? We're going to go on a journey here. Amen. Are you with me tonight? Hallelujah. God's helping us tonight because he loves us. And God is stirring, I believe, in all my heart. Uh, I believe the church knows it, that God is stirring his people. He is stirring us in this day. After all, once the blessings are well, and there's a scripture about that, everything's going well, we just go along and just live in the blessings of God. We just enjoy, amen, being saved, being full of the Holy Ghost of God, having the peace of God, amen, and enjoying the blessings of God. But over here in Luke chapter 21, it says over here, starting in verse 34, amen, Luke 21 and 34 through 36, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that the day come upon you unawares. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I want to read it again. Amen. Starting at verse 34. Amen. That's right, Brother Dale. Revival is here. When the church, Hekabashiah, when the church shakes itself from itself and we get refocused on what is the will of God. Well, the will of God is to win the lost. Amen. The will of God is, if we're going about our daily affairs, will we listen closely enough for the voice of God saying, go talk to that person. Amen. Go say something to this one. Or you could be going down an aisle and singing a song, and all of a sudden you feel led to talk to someone else, or whatever it might be. You might feel to go pray for somebody. You might feel uh, impressed in your heart to go make a meal for somebody, to go clean somebody's house, whatever it is. If we listen, God will direct us. Amen. We had a prophecy many years ago in our church. We've had many since, but we have it in our prayer tower, and it stands out to me because it's there. Amen. And God said in this, amen, that if we, any man, woman, boy, or girl would pray and seek the face of God and would ask God to have mercy, God would have mercy. But if no prayers went into the ears of God, then God God could not have mercy. He left it in the church's hands to intercede in behalf of those that are lost all around us. So, oh, how easy it is to curse the darkness. No, how easy is it to let our light shine in the midst of the darkness? Look, Nobody likes what's happening in our country, but God is shaking our country. God is shaking the American church. God is trying to get our attention. Listen, before God gives direction and the blessings come, there's always a cleansing of the temple first. We've had many, many meetings over the years where the God spoke to us in a solemn way or, or God spoke things that really dealt with our hearts and we hit those altars and we put our hearts on the altar and we cried out to God that God would bring change into our lives. And then the night service came and the power of God would fall. Amen. You barely had to get up to worship. Why? Because we allowed God to cleanse that heart, to make a vessel out of us so that we can be a vessel for God wherever we go. Oh, amen. It's not by works of righteousness, but by the grace of God that you and I are saved, not just to enjoy the blessings of God, but to be a vessel for God. Oh, God, help us in this hour. 
Help us in this hour, O oh God. And take heed to yourselves, not your neighbor, not your parents, not your wife, not your husband. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged or burdened with surfeiting. What does surfeiting mean? I jotted a note here. Consume with too much of something. We're consumed with too much of something. Yet we're the church, but our minds, our hearts are consumed with too much of something. And drunkenness, it means uh, continual, what did I have here? Habitual intoxication. We're just drunken in the things we do. We've gone overboard with it. And with the cares of life, anxieties and fears and worries. And he's warned us here, take heed to yourselves, lest at any times. Why? Your heart doesn't have to be overcharged. It can rest in the peace of God that he's provided for us. But the church can be so comfortable with surfeiting and drunkenness and, and the cares of this life so that the day come upon us unaware. What day? The day of the soon returning of the Lord. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore. Watch. In other words, be awake spiritually. That's what it means. Stir yourself. Be awake spiritually. Be sensitive to the voice of God. Listen what God's doing in our church. God planted us here. God's given us a pastor here. Come on, somebody. God's, we've got brethren down the road. God gave them a pastor there. God will speak to that candlestick over there. And it's the same Holy Ghost. They'll be speaking the same thing. Amen? So that God will have a voice in the earth. That church, that local church, is the vehicle of God on the earth. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch you therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Can you say amen, somebody? You know, Israel, ancient Israel, when God chose at one particular time that he let all of Israel hear his voice and they were afraid and they didn't want to hear God's voice, they said, Moses, you go and hear from God and you talk to us. Now think for just a minute. Is it possible? Because they worshiped the golden calf. I believe at one point they worshiped Molech. Uh, they gave some type of homage to the star of Rephaim. So they always had something in the back burner of their heart. Is it, is it possible that if they had let God speak to them, he's going to show them Oh, what's that other place over here I had written down here? Ah, when God wants, to, wants us to be clean of these things, God is purging. God is purifying when God talks to us. See, whenever we, that's why we can't let our prayer life down. Listen, church, I'm, I wore this. I'm going to wear it. I love this message. It's challenging me. It's making me go deeper in God. Amen. I'm going deeper in God. How about you? We must come up to the standard. We must do the will of God. We must draw closer to God. Have you, ask yourself, have you lost your intimacy with God like when you first got saved? Do you still have the same fervency for God and for the lost as when you first got saved? Oh, God, help us. Purify. The day of the Lord come upon us unaware. Purify. You know what it means? Listen. It means one dictionary says remove contaminants from. Anything that contaminates your spirit that does not please God, it could be an angry attitude, it could be unforgiveness, it could be whatever it is, only you and God know, only God and I know, we know our hearts, God knows our hearts, 
Thank you for the scripture, Sister Agnes. He's purifying the sons of Levi. Amen. The Bible says he'll come suddenly to his temple. But the church, the American church, live as you will. Go when you want to go to church. Uh, you can let your standard down here. Uh, you don't have to live that way anymore. Since when has God changed? Let me ask you that. It always comes down to purity. It always comes down to modesty. Why is it, be it male or female, we feel we just want to show our flesh off? Come on, somebody. Why can't you dress like when you first got saved? Women took their, uh, amen, their, their jean skirts and nobody told them, and they sewed them in the skirts. Amen, they sewed their blouses up. They looked like women. You didn't have to question it. You didn't have to question what a man looked like. Come on, somebody. When you really got born again, your entire character and nature changed. But as we walk with God and we listen to other voices and we listen to other doctrines and you put that in your spirit, next thing you know, you start letting your standard down. But, oh my, God has never changed and the standard has never changed. But if you're changing, just ask yourself a question. Why don't you ask God, God, I'm going to prayer tonight, and I'm going to start. God, would you show me, has my heart changed in any way? Has my heart, has it changed, God? When I first got saved, I just wanted to win the lost. I just wanted to be your voice. I, I wanted everybody to know how real you are, God. Oh, church, if we can, that's the heart of God. God, if we draw close and apart, I was going to that other part of that prophecy we got in our prayer room. God says, if you take care of his business, he'll take care of your business. He said, I'll take care of you. We don't have to worry about it. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be nobody. Just be you and share the love of God and listen for the voice of God in our daily lives. God will lead us. God will guide us. God will talk to us. I was talking to a brother today. Many years ago, I went to a prison meeting. Amen. After the prison meeting, I had something I needed to return to the store. And I was going to go all the way back to Manchester. I was in Enfield, and I just felt, no. I'm going to turn the car around, and I'm going to go to the store, the same store they have over here. And as I got in the mall, I started to walk, and out of the corner of my eye, I caught the face of this wayward brother who had gotten away from the Lord. And we began to talk for a moment. And ever since that time, he believes, and I know it was, it was God, I heard his voice for the sake of that brother. I didn't do anything great, but I was obedient to God, and for that I'm thankful for. And because of that, he's been in the house of God ever since and going on with God. Be who God made you to be. Be full of joy. Sing your songs of Zion, but go about our Father's business. My question is, I feel it comes back to my heart, are we able to hear God direct us in the midst of our daily affairs? Perhaps you're going to go on vacation. Perhaps you know, you're doing some leisurely thing. Are you willing to hear God speak to you and stop you in the midst of your leisure time? Are you willing? Many times, and I can't say I've always understood. I'm going to be real honest with you. My wife, as the pastor of this church, all of a sudden had to go to the hospital or make a visit. And we were going to do something, and now it's on hold. Sometimes, not always, there were times, didn't always have the right spirit. However, we grow in grace, and we allow God to do his bidding. Amen. Workers together, are we willing to let God have his way in our life, to speak to us on a daily basis, to steer us out of the norms of our everyday life? Are we willing to take the time to speak into someone's life? Purify, remove contaminants, 
Why pray? Because your heart will be pure with God. Only the pure in heart shall see the Lord. God's coming back for a pure bride, one who's made herself ready. Watch. Amen. Stay awake spiritually. Be attentive. Be ready. Pray. What does pray mean in this particular verse? To desire, to long for what? For him. For him. Oh, sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Oh, God. I've entered the haven of rest, and while we're there, let me ask you this question that's coming back to my spirit. When's the last time you wept for a lost soul? When's the last time you wept for our society? When's the last time you gathered your family together and you wept as the head of your home for someone else who's less fortunate and hurting? When's the last time, brethren, we've been God's voice through the Holy Ghost and we prayed through in the unknown tongue and we got a hold of God and we asked for mercy in the midst of everything going on around us. I don't like it any more than you do. But we must have a heart of compassion. And, and we must go to God in prayer that will change our natural outlook. Look, we have to put this old man under no greater place than a time of prayer with God. Oh, I know we have five-minute prayers. We have two-minute prayers. When's the last time... You wept before God for someone else. Hallelujah. You see, as we're watching and praying and listening what the Lord may speak to us, there's joy and peace in the journey, brothers and sisters. He gave us his joy. He gave us his peace. He said he'd never leave us. All through the Bible, you'll find where God always made a way for someone. God told the prophet Elijah in the time of great dearth in the land, you go down to the brook Cherith. Amen. You got water there? And I'm going to have something that you don't find common in your daily life, Elijah. I'm going to send a raven to bring you food every single day. What, Lord? You're going to bring what? You're saying, are you kidding me? Are you sending a bird to bring me food? See, God's ways are not your ways. They're not my ways. And then when the timing was up, the bird never came back. The brook dried up. Yet God sent him down the road and directed him. Come on, somebody. Directed him to a widow woman. And then another miracle took place. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Come on, somebody. God knows. I, the disciples at one point were worrying when Jesus talked about, I forget the exact verse and, and, and the scripture here. He talked about the leaven. Oh, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the scribes. You look it up for homework. The, the disciples are questioning, reasoning within themselves. It says, What's he talking about bread for? And what's he mean by this here bread? And the Lord discerned, obviously, their hearts. And he said, you know, why ye of little faith? He said, you know, I'm not talking. Have you forgotten how we fed whatever it was, the 4,000 or the 5,000 and the 7,000? Have you forgot how that happened, church? He says, no, I'm telling you to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and the scribes. You see, God will take care of our natural needs. I don't know, it may get pretty close to the cupboard going there, but God will somehow provide for his people. You can say amen right there. If we go about doing the will of God, if we have an ear to hear what the Spirit will speak to us, amen, if we walk in unity with God, God knows how to bless his people. 
Can you say amen, somebody? I remember a pastor friend telling me when his father's much older now and still alive, when he was a younger pastor, amen, uh, I don't know the scenario, they didn't have a lot of food, amen, and he felt to go down the road a ways, he was going someplace, and all of a sudden, uh, up a front, there was some tractor trailer that spilled over that had crates of chicken, Amen. And they were giving them away to everybody. He loaded up his truck with chickens in crates, brought them back home, was able to give it out to the neighbors, and they filled up their freezer. Come on, somebody. God will provide for his own. Say amen, somebody. God will provide for his own if we will listen for God's voice and do the will of God in this hour. He's shaking the church so that we can be the church, so that we can have the same heart as our Heavenly Father. We can have His heart. Jesus said, I've come to seek and to save that which is lost. God loves the protesters, whether they're doing things right or wrong. He loves them. They say there's a statement in the counseling field that hurt people hurt other people. Amen. Pastor ministered Sunday morning, and two of those words I looked up about the maimed and the halt. What do you mean maimed? It means somebody who was deeply injured. What do you mean by halt? It means somebody's life has come to a dead stop, and they can't go any hokabashaya. God needs his church to wake up in this hour so that he can find that one who's come to a halt. Their life has come to a complete stop in the journey, and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to turn, but if the spirit-filled, blood-bought, born-again Christian, man and woman, boy and girl, will stand up in this hour and speak the love of God. Amen. Pray for people. Seek God for them. God will give us a word, a timely word, to speak into each and every life. Do you believe that, brethren? I do. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. Amen. 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 Our life is not our own. Amen. Yes, God's given us good jobs, but it's not. Listen, listen, I didn't read this and sense it's still here. I'm going to read it. Amen. In a paraphrased way. Amos chapter 6, you can read it later, chapter 6. Then Amos cried out, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion, that put away the evil day, that lie upon beds of ivory, and they stretch themselves upon their couches, and eat the lambs of the flock, that chant to the sound of the vial, that drink wine in bowls, and anoint themselves with the chief ointments or perfumes, if you will. But they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph, the prophet told Israel, in essence, you're taking it easy, you're living a life of luxury, and you've lost your burden for the poor and the lost. And so a time of shaking comes for God to draw us back to him, to the Father's heart. What a vivid picture, church, of a backslidden church of America, Couch potato Christians that don't grieve over our nation's sins any longer. They don't weep over the iniquity in our society. God help us. The truth is we don't have time to hear any messages anymore. Why? Oh, we hear a message, but it doesn't lodge very long in the main housing, if you will. I'm not saying all. Amen. But we're too busy grabbing our sodas and our chips and watching sports all day long till we fall asleep on the couch and we go about our business the next day. Oh, God, help us. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, oh, God, stir us, God, in this day and hour. Oh, God, we return back to you, Lord. Oh, God, to hear your heart's cry. God, to hear the cry of those longing to know you and don't know where to find you. And we have the answer. Lord, stir us. Speak to us. Let us come out of our place of comfort and of ease 
And let us reach out on a daily basis and take the time and win the loss for you. Maybe it's just a word. Maybe it's just a sentence. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's an invite to listen to the broadcast and come out to the house of God now that we're going back. God, we can bring life to them for you. God bless this word to all of our hearts tonight. If there's any listening who are not saved and say, I need this Jesus, just bow your heart and say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart right now and then turn from your sins. Repentance is turning away from our sins and giving our whole life to him. And we have a church that will help you walk with God. Amen. Amen. God bless you tonight. Oh, glory to God. Can you just take a moment and put your hands up and just worship him? Thank him for his great salvation. Thank him for his great love. Amen. Thank him for his mercies to us. You know, another word for purify is redeem. He's redeeming back a pure heart for him. Isn't that beautiful? Purifying, redeeming a heart that glorifies him so that he can get the glory through us. If there's any needs out there tonight, amen, you can just be generic about it. We'll go to God again in prayer. Matter of fact, we will pray about the power to come on and all over these areas throughout New England Connecticut, our homes, that God will give them God's speed and help him everybody get up and running. We'll pray for your neighbor, Sister Elena. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's given on to us the ministry of reconciliation to bring lost humanity back to our Father God's heart. Prayers for Chrislyn, for your neighbor. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Lynn. Amen. We've got a job to do, brethren. And nobody can do it like you and the Holy Ghost living inside of you. Nothing feels greater. I was thinking about it earlier. I talked with my wife in the earlier years of our marriage or even before we got married, how I had a great day tracking, how it may have been just one soul or maybe two souls we talked to. And what a way you walked away feeling like you were a mile high because God reached somebody through you. Amen. Don't let it be just another message. Don't let Sunday's message or Sunday night's message be just another message. Amen. Sometimes we need to take a piece of paper and jot a few words down on it and put it in your, your skirt pocket or your pant pocket. And every time I reach in, maybe it's something I'm working on in my life or um, just pray more or whatever. Every time I reach in that pocket with my money, I pull that paper out as a reminder. Maybe you put it on your refrigerator. God hears the prayers of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Let's go to prayer for the needs. Father, thank you. God, you know how to reach that one that was taken to the hospital. God, you know the neighbors in great need that the brethren is reaching out to you tonight. Oh God, the devil speaks in our ear. It's no sense praying. He's a liar. Every time we pray, God hears the prayers of the righteous. And God moves upon the prayers of the righteous in faith. And God, we ask for power to be turned on in all these areas. And God, through it, may you lead someone of your people, someone somewhere, to reach a soul, to reach a life in these times, in these situations. God, would you just do that so that we can be your hands and your voice? And would you normalize the power? Would you bring peace to our society? God, would you stop the madness, oh God? Oh God, help our nation to turn back to you in repentance, oh God. 
And Father, we'll be ever grateful, Lord. And we love you and we'll stand in you with a holy boldness. God, that you're with us. And you've given us a mandate from heaven to go forth and bring forth life. God, we don't have to fear the enemy. He's afraid of us. And God, we go forth this night in the name of Jesus and we thank you for all the answered prayers in the wonderful name of Jesus. And you say amen, somebody. Please keep every pastor in your prayers. They're carrying burdens they've never carried before. Would you lift up pastors all over the world, all over our country, and the leadership that works with them? Amen. I love you all. God bless you. We're getting closer to being in the sanctuary one more time. So tonight is Wednesday night. Amen. God bless you. We'll look forward to being together again Sunday. Have a wonderful night. We love you all. Godspeed. Listen for God to talk to you. God bless you, my friends. Bye-bye now.